so yeah Becca Becca Lunnan you have just walked a hundred kilometers 115 kilometers yes yes <laughs> or a hundred women squared yeah and what's more you did an extraordinary walk in a really different way which is one thing I love about a hundred women we're all walking differently yeah so maybe the very first question is that you just share a little bit about the walk that you did sure okay I walked along the Port Davy track so from Scotts Peak all the way through to well, just shy of Port Davy really it was about seven 47 and a half kilometers on track and then because I'm me and I like exploring new places and I wanted to tie it in as well I decided to climb up Mount Berry which I thought was going to be a little bit easier than it was so there was an off-track section there as well which is what ended up making the walk 115 kilometers all up although we did celebrate at the 100 kilometer mark I was lucky enough to have a very good friend of mine volunteer to walk me in and out and in the end she ended up walking the whole way of the on the the bit that was on the track and it just left me to do the off-track bit by myself yes so that, <laughs> that, that was kind of what I did <laughs> I mean, that's pretty awesome that she even walked with you where she walked. So for those who don't know, mm. the Port Davy track is a really remote track in southwest Tasmania. Mm. So we're not talking about walking any easy walking. For some people, that's a mega walk in itself. <laughs> yes. Just the Port Davy track is a mega walk, let alone then going off track and climbing a mountain that you'd never walked before. Yes. Probably I should have done a little bit more research. Uh, the satellite imagery looked good, so I, yeah. I chose it because it didn't look like there was going to be much scrub to have to push through because that yeah. would have been a bit of an ask. It turns out the summit was not as nice as it seems and quite a few people have uh, failed to get to the true high point. I was 90 metres from it and on the same, pretty much the same height. But it turns out it's a maze of really big rocks and kind of cave like system underneath and then inability to move from one big rock to the next big rock, just like having these great big drops that you can't actually get across. So I will go back for the tippy tippy top, but <laughs> I guess for this, I, I got the, I had that summit plateau. Yeah. I mean, it's extraordinary because you also walked nonstop. Yes. So yes. do you want to tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> Well, obviously this is not what the 100 Women Squared Women Helping Women walk is about necessarily, but because I do a lot of bushwalking and walking 100 kilometres in a month or in any time frame is not something that I would struggle with or I would find a challenge. And wanting to recognise and pay tribute to the, the cause and I think the intention behind it and just how powerful... 100 women squared is, I wanted to do something that would challenge me in the way that simply walking 100 kilometers would challenge your mother who's 86 and still walking, which I think that's even more brave and courageous than what I did. But I wanted to find something that was on equal kind of magnitude for me mm. as somebody who does a lot of walking. And that was what I settled on for a few reasons, mostly because I knew I would be walking through the night and it was the kind of terrain that I could safely do that. I was slightly concerned about not getting myself into a situation where I needed to call a helicopter. I did not want that kind of publicity for the course. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say that while I planned on having some sleep before we started, I did a lot of tossing and turning and had no sleep because I was just worried about that and you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. But yes, that's why I chose to do that and I wanted to be in a vulnerable situation because I think all of us are choosing causes obviously the causes that we are walking for to raise money and awareness for uh, are causes that are helping women who are in really vulnerable positions and I am incredible I don't think I realized how privileged I was and uh, until I started working as a paramedic and I started to see how some people live and I mean you see images on television and world news and stuff that makes you realize you are privileged but it's not quite the same. And as a privileged female who's educated and I've always had a roof over my head and while money has been tight at times, it's never been like a ridiculously close kind of, am I going to buy this or am I going to feed myself, whatever it is, I've never had that. And I've not been in vulnerable situations. And so I wanted to do something that was really hard and that pushed, I mean, I don't know where my boundaries are. I didn't know whether I could walk a hundred kilometers in one hit. And I knew that 
doing that at night there were going to be some times that I was struggling and I but I wanted to feel that as part of being in that moment walking for that cause and thinking about all the women out here there who are in vulnerable positions and there is no easy fix for me I just had to keep walking and I knew I'd get there they don't necessarily and that must be scary and they don't have I had a whole community behind me I had Amy who was just wonderful I was hesitant at first about joining her team because I didn't want to negatively impact what she was doing or put pressure on her or any of all of the doubts that I had and I was like maybe I should set up my own little page but then it came back to this is actually about community as well and so I was lucky enough to have her walking obviously she started walking first and for the same cause that I chose and she was a huge and I still haven't met her but one day I will she was a huge support and inspiration. Having Em out there with me was a huge support. And then just having everybody who uh, were so generous with the donations that they gave and people that I hadn't even expected to be. I had all of that connection and support in that time of vulnerability and the knowledge that I know that I can always keep putting one foot in front of the other. It doesn't matter how slow it is. Whereas the women we're walking for might not have that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I rambled a bit. No, you didn't. Look what you've just covered. You know, the vulnerability of touching that, the increased awareness of what it must be like to be a woman who's literally walking 100 k's, but maybe 100 k's of trial because of her life situation and mm. no idea when her metaphoric 100 k's is going, going to end. You know, that mm. vulnerability, but also the community. And yeah, it's a really big part of 100 Women Squared, you know, us as women connect, reaching out and meeting gorgeous women. What a delight. And hearing their stories oh. as well, because everyone has a story and it's, it's empowering seeing the strength in women and us as women and being part of that community and it raises you up to be a better version of you. Yes, yeah, it's just, it's empowering. Mm. Mm. Great. Tell me about the cause that you walked for. I walked for Women's Health Tasmania, which, to be honest, I didn't know existed until I Googled. Yeah. As a paramedic, I get paid very good money to help people when they're in a vulnerable position, and that's at the crux of something. Uh, it's a job that needs to be done, and occasionally we get to make a very big difference to somebody's life, but it's kind of like that analogy of putting an ambulance at the base of a cliff rather than addressing the situation at the top of the cliff before people have started jumping. And that is, while I love the work I do, I feel like more difference needs to be made at the top of the cliff. Mm -hmm. So in Walking for Women's Health Tasmania, I felt that I was able to support an initiative that s tries to address that side of things a little bit more than, than ambulance work, which is very much the consequence of all of these decisions that have been made a long time ago and, and that are now leading to this crisis point. Mm. Uh, and obviously Women's Health Tasmania also does a lot of work with the women that are in really vulnerable mm. positions because generally speaking those that aren't as vulnerable can or can access the resources that allow them to make some uh, more health literate decisions around what they do with their lives and how they manage their health. Yeah. So part of 100 Women Squared, one of the other intentions is that we raise our own awareness, issues that affect women and also the services that are provided to women, yeah. which is exactly what you're saying, and the fact that you've been Googled. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, okay, this is what this organisation does. And then listening to Amy's interview or chat with you about the programs that they're doing for women in prisons. Yeah, yes, it definitely helps ways, raise awareness in that respect. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you've just walked. 115 case yeah. to yeah. support them. What about the fundraising part? Because a lot of women I know are interested in 100 Women Squared, but oh my goodness, they do not want to raise funds. And they're you know, a bit scared about that. And even though we've made it as easy as we can and give as much support as we can, what was it like for you to raise funds? Because you and Amy raised a significant amount of money. Yeah, all the people that knew us were yeah. very, very generous. <laughs> I still feel awkward actually if when you put it that way in saying that I raised funds that that feels wrong because I don't feel like I did still as contradictory as that might sound but yes this has it's, it's something that I am un 
comfortable with and I don't usually like I'll do challenges but I won't do them to raise money I think because I feel there is so much out there and there's a lot of initiatives for fundraising and stuff like that people are always asking people for money and I feel like the people that I know and that are in my friendship circles like as I said I'm in a very privileged position I have friends who are well educated and by and large uh, finding it difficult to financially support themselves and I feel like they can make their own decisions about where to put their money yeah. and so I feel awkward asking people for money for a certain cause but when I heard what you were doing uh, and the intention that it's this multifaceted mm. approach it's not just raising money for one cause that's out there and well known about there's this whole development of community and empowering people in a world where you sometimes feel very disillusioned about making change and women supporting women all of that and the fact that there was walking in there because I'm a passionate walker um, that was what made me straight away I was like I'm doing this and and yeah people were so generous it was not I didn't feel like I had to beg or anything people were just very very generous and I still don't know whether they were donate like where their decisions came into that a lot of them were like it's amazing what you're doing but they must have also had a connection with what I was fundraising for as well but yes I think there's something a way about the way that it's set up that is making it really easy to raise the funds I also know that's a major concern for many women and I've been wondering whether that's because as a generalisation, and this is only a generalisation, that most of us women aren't good at asking for what we want, especially around money. Yes. You know, so we don't ask for pay rises, for example. We don't negotiate our salary. Mm. And we think that is a small thing, but over a long period of time, so if you imagine a graduate coming into their first job Mm. and on average the male graduates will always negotiate their salary and women don't so that might be a three or four thousand dollar difference right at the very beginning Mm. but over a lifetime then the accumulating accumulated difference of how much a man earns compared to a woman is huge and Mm. to their superannuation Uh, yes yeah and may you know somehow we just I don't know, we've got embedded in us that, I don't know what it is, nice girls don't ask or we don't ask for money or it's not polite to talk about money or something. But, uh, yeah, I'd like to do some research on that. Yeah, it's interesting. I've not thought about it like that before, but I think, I think, yeah. 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 I've got a daughter who absolutely needs a pay rise. You know, Mm. what she's being paid is ridiculous for the work that she does. I have a son who it's the very first thing he'll talk about. You know, why his worth is worth more, why his contribution is worth more than... And it's not even the fact whether they get it or not. One has an intrinsic sense of this is just a conversation and the Mm. other one just makes it mean so much about, you know, maybe they won't like me, maybe it's not right, maybe they think I'm pushy, maybe they think I'm... You know, my son never goes, maybe they'll think... And it's a bit like, well, I'll, I can have the conversation. So I think that that's interesting, but lovely mm. to know that your friends and your community were just so supportive mm. in helping both you yeah, and, and Amy. Women's Health Tasmania and yep. 100 Women Squared, mm. actually. Yes, okay. yeah. So as you walked, not only did you touch your own vulnerability, mm. but we're finding that women who are walking talk to me about all sorts of other insights that they had as they were walking. So Amy, for example, got really deeply connected to her privilege, as you've just said. Yep. But she also got really uh, deeply connected to what it must be like for women who can't even afford to get sanitary gear. Yeah, yep. So did you have any of those sort of thoughts? Or what did you think about in the middle of the night? (laughs) (laughs) I have to... Walking for me is actually one thing that I do that really helps clear my mind. So I can walk and, I mean, I can sit at home and I can try and meditate 
and I drift. I definitely drift. But if I go out for a walk, even if there's something on my mind, I can go out for a walk and I can not think about anything. I can come back and I'm like, I don't actually know. Sometimes I'll think about things, but often it's very much a clearing of the mind. There was plenty of that. There was lots of thinking about how uncomfortable things got once the chafing started. (laughs) But I think the biggest realisation, and a lot of this comes when I write about it afterwards, an unintended and delightful consequence of having started a blog early on when I started walking. And I think that was around realising that while I was out there and uh, very much this was a journey that I had to walk and no one else could walk it for me, But the difference between the walking that I did when I was completely by myself and that was the off-track bit and also a bit of the on-track bit because when I said goodbye to Em, she started to turn around and walk back Mm. and we'd left it that she could choose to just keep walking and get back to her van and have a sleep in the van while I walked out or she might, she was carrying a single skin tent and a sleeping bag whereas I wasn't so I had to keep walking. Uh, She might set up camp in one of those little spots and wait for me there so I didn't know where she was going to be and while I had been fine for the first 47 kilometers on the track and I was like yeah I could easily turn around and walk out and this wouldn't be a challenge at all I might have tried to walk up Mount Berry a little bit too fast and then got a little bit stuck on the summit and then uh, by the time I came back onto the track I had pushed well into my lactate threshold and all of a sudden my five kilometers an hour was down at two and a half and I couldn't actually walk any faster than that. While it hadn't actually really rained, uh, all of the scrub that was overhanging the track was soaking wet so we were wet throughout. There was a few hours during the sunlight like in the afternoon where we dried out but then as soon as it got dark again there was a, a very small rain shower and everything got soaked again. So it was soaking wet. I have not had much of a problem with chafing before but I had the worst chafing on that walk back out and that period of time when I was by myself I felt very much alone and it was just thinking about all the people that were supporting me or might be wondering about how I was going uh, and bringing it back to not thinking about how am I going to walk 50 kilometers like this but I just have to walk one more step can I do that yes I can okay and the next step I can do that too and not thinking it further ahead than that. And then as soon as I saw Em's tent and caught up with Em, the difference, there was such a big difference of a shared load. And I mean, I'd been aware of the benefit of sharing things that are difficult, but it really hit me because she wasn't going to carry me. And there was nothing really that had changed in terms of what I still had to do, but I had someone right there with me walking each step of the way and it wasn't a challenge anymore to to even, I didn't have to think about, can I do the next step? Yes, I can do it. That was just a given now. And yeah, just the change it has to have people and community Mm. and sharing of burden. Yeah, that struck me in a way that it's not struck me before. Well, that's Mm. beautiful. That's profound, actually. Yeah. Especially when we... uh, deeply centred in our independence. And I am, I have always been highly independent, (laughs) perhaps detrimentally so, but yeah. Well, now you've got an and. Mm. I'm highly independent and Mm. I know what it's like to share a burden and Mm. have someone walk with me step by step. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing. Mm. I I would really like you to talk about rock hopper. You know, in your blog. Uh, yes, uh, okay. <laughs> what would you like to know? Yes. Well, I first heard about you on the Cradle Mountain. You were doing the te- a complete transfer of Tasmania from one end to the, right across to the other, and you were yeah. a day or so ahead of my husband and I. We were walking Penguin to Pump House, and we kept on hearing about you. <laughs> it's a delightful, and actually, 100 Women Squared was, came together on the Port Davy track. Mm. as I walked that. Mm. So our paths have already been crossing in and out. You know, what I yeah. would call the golden thread or the red yes. thread of life yes. has already been weaving in and out. So tell, to, and so Rock Hopper, you know, we ha- kept hearing about you and here you are now. You've walked for 100 Women Squared. Your blogs are beautiful reading. Yeah. You write really, really well. Oh, thank you. So why don't we just have a bit of a plug for that too, you know, while we're here. 
so yeah, it's Rock Monkey Adventures, and that Rock Monkey. Um, oh, I'm yeah, so no, sorry. No, that's right. <laughs> it's the same kind of thing. Mm-hmm. That name came out of one of the early when I first came down to Tassie. I'd done no bushwalking, but I got a job in an outdoor store, and I was like, mm, I should probably know a little bit about the gear I'm selling. So I'll do some bushwalking, and I'll learn about it firsthand. I fell in love with it from the get go. Finally felt like I'd come home. Never, ever had that feeling in my life before. I just felt out of place and like I didn't fit in with society. I was not a city person. I was not cool. But all of a sudden, I just had this sense of connection. And so I joined the Pandani Bushwalking Club. And very early on, like, I don't know, a handful of walks in, I was christened the Rock Monkey by a friend. We'd gone to do a traverse from Mount Dove to Mount Amos. And anybody who's climbed Mount Amos knows those beautiful granite slabs, which are wonderful to climb up until they get wet and then they're very slippery. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And so the bit that went up Dove and then down Dove and up Mount Amos was completely off track. Beautiful rock to to scramble on. And I didn't know it, but I bushwalking has always been about self-discovery for me and significantly changed who I am. But it turned out that I love rock. I'm not really a rock climber, but I love rock scrambling and I feel comfortable in places that most people don't and I might have been told to get down off certain things more than once and that's where I was christened the rock monkey. I started the blog I think initially because I wanted to be able to share, partly I I found it difficult to access information on all of the walks that I wanted to do and thought that maybe it would be helpful to other people and I also wanted to share some of the photos and the experiences that I'd had with mostly my mum and it just grew from there it started off very factual this is how you get to this walk and this is what it's like and this is what the train's like and this is how long it took and it's very much turned into more about my experiences out there which has had added benefits the benefit of reflection and of actually working through some of the things Mm. or the feelings that I've had out there and an amazing resource for memories which Mm. unless we actively Uh, kind of pursue that memory making process you lose them Mm -hmm. but I can go back and have a look at even if it's just photos or just read between the lines of some of the text that I've written and Mm -hmm. it's been really special for remembering some of those very amazing moments Mm -hmm. yeah and even just as a bushwalker now I've read a few of yours yeah it's like oh I know this is okay or there's some there's some tips but most importantly what I've really loved about the blogs that I've read is that it shows an inquiring mind and an expansive consciousness that's been informed by wilderness Mm. which is maybe one of the greatest intelligences that we still have and you're uh, translating almost like a translator of the wisdom you know that is contained when you're out there and quiet and peace at peace and connected you know, that wisdom that comes yeah. through in your blogs are just yeah. beautiful i feel like it's only the tip of the iceberg but yeah. i think you've mentioned before that we really don't know anything okay. and i feel like i don't know anything out there but that's also okay and then every now and again you just have these just minor epiphanies i guess and and something clicks into place and it can be difficult to put that into words Mm. but I enjoy the challenge of it and it is really nice I sometimes I'll run into people and I'll be like oh you're the rock monkey and other times people will send an email asking for a particular GPS route mostly because they're going somewhere and they just want it just in case the weather turns foul and for safety and again it's that community and that connectedness and feeling like you can make a small difference to someone and if it encourages people to get out to some of these special places maybe they'll also, it, it encourages them to take the steps that need to be taken to protect them as well. Absolutely. Because, yeah, I, I don't know, the wilderness is really, really special. As, as you said, it's oh, that source of wisdom that we've mm. still kind of got left. Mm. Hopefully, if we keep it that way. Yeah, hopefully. But I'm sure conversations like this and conversations like Rock Monkey really help us take another look at the beauty that's there and honour it in a way where we really look after it and let her teach us what we need to know so that we can one day live in, you know, live where maybe all decisions are made 
with the respect of her mm. Gaia, you know, the land is number one and everything yeah. else underneath that. Because unless we do that... We're not going to be here. We're not going to be here. No. Yeah. I don't know any other species that would actively pollute its own water and its own land and its own food mm. and its own air, the very thing that our life depends on, and mm. somehow justify that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if you were allowed to say anything to any other woman who might be thinking of inquiring about walking as a part and joining our community, 100 Women Squared, Women Helping Women, what would you say? Do it. Do it. <laughs> just, just do it. <laughs> don't think of it. If the whole big thing is a bit too scary, don't look at the big thing. Just look at the individual parts. You get so much more out of it than I think you give and that also makes me feel really awkward I thought I was doing something that would be a bit more philanthropic but I feel like I've received more than I've given still mind you I feel that way a lot about life I feel like I can't possibly give back everything that gets given to me and I'm still looking forward to meeting so many of the amazing women that have walked and that are part of the community already because they are that I mean they're all amazing so if you're thinking about doing it chances are you're also amazing and the little things that you might be concerned about whether it's how you're going to fit your kilometers in it doesn't matter how long it takes it doesn't matter how you do them you don't have to do what I did that was just that was just what was right for me but we all have our own life journeys and you all have your own hundred kilometers I have learned look, I had to I did as much walking as I could I only had a, a few weeks but I did as much walking as I could because I didn't know I could walk 100 kilometres in one go. So I did lots of 20 or 30 kilometre walks and I discovered I discovered little paths around the house, that, around my area that I hadn't walked on before and that was, I still walk on them. I walk to work now more than I ever did. It's 7.8 kilometres, it takes me an hour and a half, but I feel so much better when I get to work and even if I'm walking home in the middle of the night, I get home and... I don't feel like I've been at work for 12 hours anymore. Yeah, sorry, I'm rambling more no, about me, not. but... <laughs> no, this is, what we want. this is the gold. You are the gold. But yeah, there's, there's community and there's, you learn a lot about yourself and you're doing all this while you're doing some good. You're raising some money for some really important causes. You get to choose which cause you want and which cause it speaks most to you. And there's been some amazing causes out there that made me feel like maybe I should, could have done a bit more research as well, but yeah, it's empowering. I had become quite disillusioned. I mean, I don't, I don't watch a lot of news anymore because it's always negative. Yeah, but it gave me an avenue to actually be like, no, I can make a change and I can choose how to make that change. And 100 Women Squares provides all the framework you need. There's n you don't have to think about it all. You just, yep, I'm going to do this. And away you go, one step in front of the next yeah. I'll put in front of the next yeah fabulous well thank you so much for your time today it's thank actually you. really touching mm. to meet you likewise and you're right there was a whole community of women holding you as you were walking mm. out there and we were all whenever we thought about you god I, I don't know how many times Amy and I said I wonder how she's going <laughs> you know we were just sending you as much love as we possibly could to keep you as safe as possible to mm. be in your home and it worked and it worked well mm. you were in one step in front of the other one foot in front of the other next day so thank you very much for being a part of 100 Women Squared thank you thank you for setting up and allowing all of us to do this well, let's welcome in the next lot of women whoever mm. they are so just for anyone who's listening to this, marycedawire.com, 100 Women Squared, have a look, read about it, listen to Beck's story, listen to everyone else's story, and even if you're a little bit scared, then we really welcome you to reach out and give us a ring, and we'll see whether we can make it as easy as pie for you, and as delightful for you as it has been for Beck. I'm sure there's plenty of us that'll go walking with you if you need a walking buddy. There you go. That's the community yep. speaking again. So, okay, so thanks heaps for your time Thank today. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you.